All right, so today we're gonna to talk about multiplication properties and the distributive property. You've already learned about the addition properties and now we're gonna talk about the multiplication properties. If we look at the algebra behind this, notice where the grouping symbols are. D was with C when it was being multiplied and now it's with E. So changing the grouping of the numbers will not change their product. So just like um, with the addition, we can also do this when the entire problem is involving multiplication. For example, six times two is first being multiplied. If we wanted to, we could always multiply the two with the four instead. Notice who the two is associating with changes. Either way, the answer is still 48, okay? Let's look at the commutative property. The commutative property, again, is all about the order, okay? The commutative property is all about the order. So C times D would equal D times C. So down here, what, what would change? The negative two would first be multiplied and then times the six. Okay, so our answer would still be negative 12. Okay, so let's recap. Associative is always the group who they associate with and commutative is always the change in the order, okay? All right, the identity property of multiplication is when you multiply by one. So if I multiply any number, A, any number, by one, I get that same number. So negative seven times one is still negative seven. It doesn't change its identity, okay? And then the inverse property is where we multiply by the inverse. Now, last year you talked about fractions. Inverses are um, the fraction flipped over, right? So we could always multiply a times one over a to get one. For example, if we had um, one fifth, it would be five over one. So that would equal one. I don't know why that equal sign is right there. It shouldn't be. It should be five times one fifth equals one. All right, so multiplying the inverse always results in a one. What's the inverse of six, okay? So you could think of a six as being a six over a one, so the multiplicative inverse would be one sixth. What's the inverse of two thirds? It would be three halves. Make sure you're writing down these examples, okay? It's important especially to have the word inverse, and then the inverse of six would be one sixth. The inverse of negative two thirds would be three halves, but we want it to be one. And a negative times a positive equals a negative. So if we wanted the inverse, it would have to be negative. What would be the inverse of seven tenths? Remember, we would change the decimal to a fraction, and the inverse of that would be 10 sevenths. Okay, so let's look at the zero property. This is a new one. The zero property only works with multiplication because what we're saying here is every number times zero is zero. So negative seven times zero is zero. Okay, let's look at the distributive property. This is also a new one. Make sure you write these down. If you need to go back and pause the video to write them down, you may. So what the distributive property says, you can multiply a number by each number in the parentheses individually. So instead, if maybe this is gonna give you some crazy big number, you don't have to multiply um, last. You could multiply first. You could multiply the six times the two and the six times the three, which would look like this. Figure out what you would get. Six times two is 12 and six times three is 18. Add them together and then you get 30. Down here, you would multiply the negative six by each individually. So negative six times two is a negative 12 and a negative six times three is a negative 18. And when we're adding a negative with another negative, I have more negatives, so 30 negatives. All right, so let's circle all the answers that make the following expression true. Okay, so some of these are simplified, some of them aren't. So let's look at this negative three times two times one. 
Let's look at it with the distributive property first. So a negative 3 times a negative 2 is a negative 6. And a negative 3 times a 1, we're going to add a negative 3. Remember, the distributive property goes to both numbers. The number one error, write this down, the number one error that people make is they only distribute one time. We need to distribute to both numbers. That's the error. So you need to distribute to both numbers in the parentheses. Okay, so a negative 6 plus a negative 3. Here we go. That's that one. Would a negative 6 plus 1 work? No, because that one they did not distribute to both numbers. Okay, what about if we solve, we get a negative 9. If we solve this one, we get negative 9. So it works. Do we get 3? No. Do we get 12? No. Do we get negative 6? No. A negative 6 plus a 3? No. And a negative 5? No. Okay? All right, so to recap, these are multiplication properties. So you should have property 1 would be the associative property. Make sure we know it's grouping. The second property that you should see is commutative property. The third property that we see is the identity property. The fourth that we should see in your notebook is the inverse. The fifth that we should see in your notebook is the zero property. Finally, we should see the distributive property along with this um, example. Okay, make sure you have this example written down because you will see one very similar to that in the future. All right, and that's all I have for you today. See you next time.